Chapter 14 was about what happens when light runs into opaque materials. Chapter 15 is what happens when light runs into transparent materials. What is the difference between transparent and opaque materials? Miss Pond. Opaque is see-through Light does not go through opaque. Light does go through transparent materials. What is a translucent material? Translucent material. Name. Light, some of the light goes through, some does not. So it's somewhere in between opaque and transparent. We're talking about either opaque or transparent, not translucent. So chapter 15 is about what happens when light goes through materials, goes through transparent materials. So what happens when light goes through a transparent material is light bends when it enters a different medium. This is the concept of refraction. So we now have two terms, refraction and reflection. Refraction and reflection. And luckily, they sound very close to one another, which makes it easy to talk about refraction and reflection in some sense. So refraction. The concept that light bends when it enters a different medium. At its most basic level, we'll look at a picture. This is light incident on from air into glass. So we have theta i, or the incident angle. We still have theta prime. Theta prime, Stuart, is what? the reflected angle. Or the angle of reflection. And theta r then is going to be the refracted angle. So notice, light is coming toward the air glass boundary and it's in the air. So this is our incident ray. Remember, all of these angles that we're talking about are all measured relative to the normal. This dotted line represents the normal relative to the air glass interface. The reflected ray, remember, the angle of reflection is always the same as the incident angle. So some of the light is reflected, and some of it is uh, transmitted through our transparent material, and therefore we have an angle of re uh, refraction here. We could also have something that looks like this. If the air is, or if the light is going through the glass and is going to then go into the air, it is again refracted and reflected. And notice that when it's going from air to glass, it's bent toward the normal. And when the light is going from glass to air, it is bent away from the normal. And we'll get to exactly how that works and why uh, in a little bit. So the question is, why does the light bend? And the answer is because the speed of light is reduced in mediums other than a vacuum. So we have the speed of light, 3.88 times 10 to the 8 um, meters per second. That's the speed of light in a vacuum. And light will always move slower than that in other mediums. And the way it looks is this. This is the figure from your book. We have light coming this way and then it goes through the glass. And it is actually bent as it goes through the glass. And the way it works is we have this equation from chapter, chapter 12. Velocity equals frequency times the wavelength. Well, it turns out that the frequency is constant. It does, is not medium dependent. So the frequency is constant. That means if the velocity is decreased, and the frequency is constant, this means that the wavelength must also decrease. Now, believe it or not, I don't think this actually
actually helps as much as a different little video, or not video, but a different picture that I have, which is this picture right here. This is an animated GIF, which helps to understand why light bends when it enters a different medium. Not only that, it is very entertaining to watch. Light source. Light is moving out from this source. This red line here, dotted line, is the ray. This is the direction the light is traveling. You can see that it's bent when it enters the, uh, as we go from air into glass, for example. Now, what you need to understand is each one of these blue lines is called a wave front. It represents the crest of the wave, which means the distance between two of these wave fronts is going to be the wavelength. And what happens is, as you can see, when it enters the new medium, the distance between the two lines is less, and therefore the wavelength is less. The wavelength has decreased, and because that wavelength has decreased, it is the path of the light has been bent toward the norm. That's how it works. And I will now turn this off because I know neither you nor I can concentrate with that on the screen. All right, so done all that. Let's do next. We need to talk about how much it's going to be bent depending on the material. So we have to talk about a material property which is called the index of refraction. The index of refraction, the symbol is a lowercase n. And the index of refraction is simply a measure of how much the light will bend in a certain medium, but it really depends on the differences between the two indexes of refraction, which we'll get to in a little bit. The equation for the index of refraction, it is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in whatever medium you are talking about. So C stands for the speed of light in a vacuum. And here, the V stands for the speed of the light in the medium. Okay, the dimensions on the index of refraction. Edward, what are they going to be? Um, Work through it. What, is the, what are the dimensions on the speed of light in the vacuum? What are the dimensions of the speed of light in the medium we're talking about? Sure, what's the speed of dimensions on the speed of light in whatever medium we're talking about? Right, so what do you get? We take meters per second divided by meters per second. Nothing. So the index of refraction is dimensions. Okay, let's take a look at some indexes of refraction. There is a table in your book which looks very much like this. On page 564, 564, we have indexes of refraction for all sorts of various substances. Notice this is something you will need in order to do homework problems for your book and perhaps some problems from my worksheet. You need to be able to access different indices of refraction. Bless you, 564. Um, different indexes of refraction for different substances. Let's start off by looking at the index of refraction for air. The index of refraction for air is equal to 1.000293 with seven sig figs. Truth of the matter is for our purposes in this class, saying that the index of refraction of air is equal to 1.000 is good enough, right? Four sig figs is plenty. So we consider uh, light of the index of refraction of air to be approximately the same as the index of refraction of a vacuum, which would just be exactly one. 